Here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh, we found an engine that we wanted to learn a little bit more about. And I'm going to tell you right up front that I don't know anything about this, so I'm going to ask all the beginner questions that you might have asked if you were here. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Pete Plum, who is the man behind this. And what am I looking at here, Pete? Essentially, this is half of an O200. Okay. We uh, cast our own case and our own crankshaft. We supply the rods and pistons in kit form. So the home builder can uh, buy our kit and if he's got an O200 core or off the shelf OEM parts from an O200, he can build this two cylinder version of that. Okay, and uh, why did you go down that path where you're building part of it and some of it comes from another source? Well, I didn't feel it was necessary to reinvent the wheel and we all know how, how uh, reliable the O200 is. Sure, Continental and, has been a great company oh, for the best. For, I mean, we've, forever, so. we've all learned to fly behind Continental. Absolutely. And me included, and I've got a lot of time behind them. And, and I thought, what a wonderful platform to develop a, a, an ultralight, light sport engine from. And so all I did was um, build a case and a crank that would accept Continental parts. I see. Yep. Well, that's probably a smart move, what yeah. you did there. What, uh, when did you start this project, Pete? I started in uh, 2012, January of 2012, uh, with a uh, hand-carved hand molds for the case. Okay. And then we showed up at Oshkosh that year uh, with a, uh, a mock-up to just to kind of test the, test the waters. All right. And it was received very well, so we went ahead with it. And uh, the, the very first prototype ran on uh, April 19th of 2014. Okay, so, so this is a fairly recent production. Yes. And um, give me some of the basic specifications about the airplane. Let's start with the obvious one horsepower. You, uh, uh, 57 horse. 57 horsepower. Yeah, and, and, and previously you asked about how this came about. It really did come about because uh, the airplane that it's mounted to now is the first plans built Cracker Jack sport plane. Now I designed the original Cracker Jack back in 1978. I wow. was about 26 years old. <laughs> and um, uh, this particular airplane was built by uh, Gus Geisinger in Pennsylvania. And he prompted me every month. He'd say, hey, Pete, I need some more plans. I need some more plans. <laughs> and we, he eventually got this airframe finished. Unfortunately, he passed away and uh, his the airplane was then um, lived in Detroit area for a while and then we were able to make a deal with him and get the airframe without the engine for the test bed for this Pegasus Perfect. engine. Perfect, so but one of your earlier projects to one of your newer projects. Came right full circle, that yeah. That makes a nice little story there. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to it now. Okay. Now this is, a, this is a single place aircraft, this is quite a light aircraft. It's 450 pounds, yes. Okay, Yeah. and uh, 57 horsepower, is, that would work on a lot of airplanes in this space down it here. It really does. But what, uh, what kind of aircraft do you envision it being well, mounted on? Uh, this is really poised to be a direct replacement for the 503s that are now the okay. gone. Okay. Uh, the the this particular beta test case doesn't represent it, but there are uh, Rotex style bed mounts on the new production cases. So you will take your choice of either the Continental mount or the Rotex bed mount. For those who have a 503, they want to take it off their airframe. So you're trying to make this, this uh, sort of a quick, not quick swappable, but right. swappable so that they Absolutely. could pull the old engine off, put this one on. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, so we have the entire fleet of all the 503 powered airplanes that this would work perfectly on. Same weight and power class, except it's four stroke direct drive. Okay, so 503 was one of the most popular engines it Rotax was. ever made. Yes. Uh, it's discontinued now. They only make the 582 and the two-stroke because they kind of moved into the four-stroke, four-cylinder yes. engines that, that they've done phenomenally well with, but that left an opening for you. Yes. And so somebody, all those airplanes out there that have had a 503 on there, but they, maybe it's a tired engine now and they need to do something about that, could put this on in place of it. That's right. How does and it compare for weight? Uh, this engine, as you see it right now, weighs about 110 pounds with the uh, exhaust, with the and, exhaust. The, and the dual ignition uh, slick magnetos. Okay. Now we could probably save some weight with uh, electronic ignition, but I haven't tested that. I wanted to, the, the, the original business model was to take a Coro 200 and make a two cylinder out of it. So we used everything, the accessory case, the magnetos, the bearing kit, the seals, 
everything for an o, a o 200 and put it in our case okay. and, and with the crankshaft. Yeah. So when when somebody takes, I'm getting back to uh, weight again because uh -huh. uh, if somebody takes that engine off their, the 503 Rotax, yep. I mean, off of their whatever it is they've got it on and put this on, what, what accommodation do they need to make for the difference in weights? It's going to be really close because with the, with the B gearbox and the exhaust, the two Bing carburetors on there on, on the 503, right. this is going to be right there. Is it's going right? to be so, 105, 110. Okay, yep. so very weight similar then. Very weight similar, but maybe a, a little more power. But quite different in how it operates. Two stroke, four stroke, right. direct drive versus uh, the B gearbox you refer to for those that may not know. Right. It's just a drive reduction system. Right. Uh, because that engine will run in the 5,000 range, something like that. Yep. What RPM does this run at? 2,900 okay. at full power, uh, cruise 26, 2,700, like an It's kind of like you're used to on any Continental engine sure. ever, which is sure. probably almost every pilot that's ever flown has been behind a Continental at one time or another. So right. those numbers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. And uh, you said, you mentioned the word kit earlier. You're, yes. se you're selling the engine as a kit, are you? Yes. A Pegasus is a kit engine, and that's all it's licensed to do is sell the kit. We, would, uh, we are uh, going to establish a network of distributors worldwide, and uh, th they will take them to, to the public. So, uh, so they would do the assembly. They can do the assembly. Uh, there will be, I'm certain, there'll be engine shops that will want to build full engines, and uh, some of the new manufacturers that are going to want to use this engine as OEM uh, original equipment will most likely want uh, running engines now. You know, they, they'll want a completed engine, not a kit. So, sure, we are going to have to possibly spin off another division that does make the engine, but Pegasus does not. It just sells the kit. Okay. Now, that would all be on an experimental aircraft because uh, this air, this engine has not gone through the ASTM process yet. Do you have a plan for that? Yes, we do. Okay. And it, it, it is, hasn't happened yet, as you said, but we are, uh, that is in the plan. Okay. Yep. So then it could be used by anybody making one of the lighter um, light sport type That's models. Right. Okay. That's right. Now, a lot of those are two-seaters and they might need more power than this, but they're not all that way. So That's right. very good. Where are you located, Pete? I'm in Shafter, California. We're just outside of the Delta Airspace at Bakersfield. Okay. In the San Joaquin Valley. So right Valley. in the center of the state then, kind of? Yeah. Now, this particular engine, uh, the engine kit and the, the uh, manufacturing facility is in Wright City, Missouri. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're bringing parts in from there. Yeah. We're, and, uh, they're all accumulating there, and we're, we're, sh are, we're warehousing and shipping from there as well. In the 503 that it replaces or can replace, that's a fast spool up engine typical of two strokes. Uh -huh. uh, how would someone behave differently? Would they have to go through some, assuming they knew how to fly their in airplane intimately, what would they have to accommodate in their own experience to adjust to this engine feed? I wouldn't think anything. Um, I, I've never, well, I've only got limited experience with a 503, but it was very much, it was on a Phantom and it was very similar to, to this. There was no difference to me. A lot of it depends on the prop, and, and uh, uh, you know this this is a this particular one was provided by Craig Cato, and he he want, he makes a wonderful product, and uh, a lot uh, of people love his prop, no is, question. And so this is a fairly flat pitch. It's a 64 inch diameter, uh, 32 pitch, so it it responds quickly. Okay. Yeah. So to the, the spool throttle. up time is fast on it. Yeah, and and the the carburetor. I want to mention the carburetor while you're okay. uh, mentioning it. This is a uh, Zenith Bendix carburetor that um, is readily available for uh, Harley-Davidson motorcycles, ah, the big twin. Okay. It's got an accelerator pump on it. And so, what does that do? Well, it, it gives a little squirt of fuel on the butterfly as you open the throttle. And it, there's no lag time at all. So you, you give it the throttle, ah, it goes. Okay, this speaks it, to it my goes. question about spooling up. Yes. Okay, yes. I got that. Yep. Tell well, me a little bit about what the cost of the engine would be to a home builder. Let's say I built this airplane here now and I went, you know, that looks good. What would it take them to get that engine? The the kit with the uh, the new kit with the uh, accessory case forty nine ninety five. Okay. Uh, for the first hundred, we're going to offer them at forty four ninety five. That's okay. through our distributors. And then they got to go add some other parts. So what would it take them by the time they get the engine done and ready to go flying with it? Well, it's kind of a guess, but uh, if you went all brand new, we'd be under ten thousand for a brand new engine. Okay. If you have a core, uh, I, I can give you a, a first hand. Uh, uh, account. I bought a core out in California for 1800. You you end up with almost two engines worth of parts in it, um, and that was 1800 bucks. Wow! And we built 
an engine last year here on the flight line. We built a DP-1, and that, by the way, that is the official name. It's a it's Pegasus Motor Corporation DP-1-0100 engine. That's the designation okay. of, yes, the engine, of the parts that you that's supply. That's right. Okay. It's a model number, DP-1. Okay. Anyway, we built one on the flight line with that core, and it, we did nothing to it. It was just a, a greasy old 0200 we got out of a 150, brought it out here, cleaned it up, built an engine right here on the line. <laughs> Pretty cool. Fun. Pretty yeah. cool. Uh, I've asked you all the questions I can think of, okay. but people always have some more. Where can we find you on the web, and we'll put it up on the screen for people? Uh, www.flypegasuspower.com. Okay, very good. I don't have anything about this engine yet, but I've got a lot of stuff about airplanes that could use this engine, yeah. and you can find that and lots of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Pete Plum and myself here at EA AirVenture Oshkosh.